Hi folks, welcome back. It's another football Friday night coming up. Last weekend, a ton of home games. And, and this weekend, I, I think we have uh, three home games and uh, the rest of the teams on the road. Let's, uh, let's take a look at uh, the teams in action. We'll begin with Carthage, which is uh, home this coming Friday night to New Hartford. Uh, the Comets rank 13th in the state right now. They're playing very well. They are playing very well, and they're probably going to have their toughest test of the season against New Hartford. Carthage coming off a 21-7 win over CVA. Jeremiah Adamola Sadip, 233 yards, two touchdowns. And I'll tell you what, New Hartford is going to prove to be a challenge for the Comets. That should be a great game. And Sadip only had 233 yards this week? <laughs> That's it, yeah. What, was, what do you do, take the week off? <laughs> I mean, usually we're talking... Three, four hundred yards for him. Unbelievable, so, yeah. yeah. And, uh, you know, 6-0 and oh overall right now. The comments looking good. Uh, Lowville, also home Friday night. They're, they're coming off a win over Canastota uh, by a score of 39-7. to Lowville, 4-2 and two overall, 2-1 two and one in Class C. And uh, Coach Kaufman has that team playing well. Yeah, and they get Little Falls on Friday night. Should, another contest that should be a good game as well. All righty, Indian River. Hits the road. Uh, Indian River's been blowing out everybody uh, lately, and uh, last week was no different. Defeated Homer by a score of 52 to 14. Uh, Trevor Shawcross once again a, a big night for uh, for the Wolves. Yeah, and they head to Chittenango to play there 6:30 on Friday night. Uh, Chittenango and Indian River, two Class B schools, looking to make a push before playoffs start in a couple of weeks. General Brown. Continues uh, their excellence on the gridiron. Uh, the the Lions looking great. They improved to six and zero on the season by beating Holland Patton last Friday night uh, by a score of uh, sixty two to fourteen. Uh, you know what can you say? Lions continuing to uh, to impress. Yeah, Drew Pauly had uh, three touchdowns in that game. Passed for one. Hayden Moody ran for two touchdowns. And General Brown traveling to Canastota. Maybe Indian River and General Brown could carpool because <laughs> they're only a couple of miles apart there. <laughs> that, that's right. It'll be uh, it'll be interesting to see how the Lions do there. Uh, I, I'm expecting them to uh, to roll once again uh, this week, even yep. though the game is on the road. Uh, South Jefferson on the road this week. The Spartans taking on Mount Markham. Mount Markham's going to be a little upset. They lost their first game of the year last week. Um, it should be interesting. The Spartans, Gavin Warner, ran for two scores in last week's uh, a win, so they're playing well. Yeah, and they're coming off, as you said, a win over Oswego last week. Uh, Braden Mick threw two touchdowns. Gavin Warner, two scores. South Jeff, 4-1 and one overall, 3-0 and oh in Section 3 play. And as we've been saying, they're only lost a last-second field goal from Governor that gave the Wildcats a win over South Jeff in Adams a few weeks back. Yeah, Beaver River uh, will be on the road this coming uh, Friday night. Uh, uh, the Beavers didn't get any uh, any help from the schedule maker. No. <laughs> uh, Gloversville came to town as a last-minute replacement, and uh, Gloversville defeated the Beavers. Uh, you you were on top of that, and you knew that uh, Gloversville was going to be the opponent. Yeah, and Kate Schneider, 212 yards, a pair of touchdown passes, but it was a good test for Beaver River. Gave them a game, whereas in years past, if you accepted a forfeit win, you couldn't play a game that week. But the state has changed that rule to where if you get a forfeit, you can replace it with another team. And it gave Coach Matt Leindecker's team a chance to get out on the field, play, maybe not get a little rust on, you know, so late in the season. And, you know, despite the loss, I think it was what Matt Leindecker was looking for to get his team out there in a game situation because – Oh, season's only a couple weeks away, believe it or not. Mm. And by the way, the Beavers at Cato Meridian this week. Uh, uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do on the road. Let's, uh, let's move up to Section 10. Potsdam, after a bye week, uh, back in action uh, this Friday night, visiting Messina. Yeah, and, you know, this should be an interesting game. Matt Schwartz figure. He's your athlete of the week this week. Athlete of the week this week, and can I tell you a little bit about him, uh, Robbie? He a uh, very unselfish player, and you need somebody like this. Now, last year he played the line. They needed they needed someone on the offensive line, so he moved in, helped out there, 
He's a stellar uh, player on defense, too, helping uh, the Sandstoners uh, to an undefeated season so far. Yeah, Matthew and, Schwartz. Uh, and Schwartz and looking at your notes here, a Colton Pierpont student, is that correct? Colton Pierpont student, yeah. You know, they don't have football there, so he wanted to go someplace to play. Uh, Potsdam uh, really welcomed him with open arms, and it was a great move by, uh, by Jim Kirka, the coach there, to, uh, to bring him in because he's been uh, a great addition to the Sandstoner program. Absolutely, and the Sandstoners looking to continue their magical run in the NAC this year. Alrighty, Governor in action uh, on Friday night. Uh, Governor coming off a loss to OFA by a score of 50 to 12. Uh, Wildcats, you know, still feeling their way through the season, and uh, Sean Devlin uh, hoping for for good things from the Wildcats this weekend. Yeah, they're three and two overall, three and two in their division, and Sean Devlin has a young team this year, and you know they're trying, as you said, they're trying to feel their way and you know kind of get their groove this season and you know I expect once postseason play comes around Governor will be a formidable opponent for anyone who has to take them on. Well we're not going to forget eight-man football that's also happening this weekend. South Lewis travels to Tupper Lake and Weedsport will visit Thousand Islands uh, both of those games on Friday night. Saturday Sandy Creek on the road taking on the uh, Lecters of Hannibal. (laughs) Uh, They they, uh, uh, they handed Mount Markham their first loss of the season last week. Sandy Creek playing some good football. They are playing some good football, and you know they are led by their quarterback Hudson Hunt, who has been outstanding this year. They also have a very good running game, good defense. The offensive and defensive lines doing their part this season. Sandy Creek going to be a tough out this year. Yeah, it should be interesting. Uh, Section ten Saturday, OFA travels to Canton. For a game, uh, Matt Tesmer has uh, has the Blue Devils playing some good football. Yeah, Blue Devils four and one overall, three and one in their class. Uh, Ashton Amo, 146 yards against Governor, and he scored a pair of touchdowns in that contest. And that pretty much wraps it up for high school football. And yep. uh, you know what? We can't talk Syracuse football this week because no, they got a bye. They're on a bye, getting ready for their game uh, at Pittsburgh next week. But St. Lawrence is home, uh, taking on Hobart. Yeah, and that should be a good contest. St. Lawrence coming off uh, a big win where, you know, they beat, uh, I believe it was Union in overtime mm-hmm. on a field goal at home for their first Liberty League win of the season, nice. their first Liberty League contest. So, you know, it should be a good match up there. Alrighty, uh, not a ton of football locally uh, Friday and Saturday at home. A lot more games on the road, but uh, check out a, a high school game near you. It's, it's fun to go to, fun to watch, and uh, and cheer on the local teams. Yeah, and we've only got, like I said, a couple more weeks before sectional playoffs start, and uh, the season is winding down so quick. It seems yeah. like it's gone by really fast, and a lot of local teams at the top of their standing, so I think it's going to be an outstanding postseason for teams in our area. Yeah, a lot of strong teams in the area. So, yeah, it, it should be an exciting uh, uh, time for sectionals. That's it for now. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next week.